Welcome to Financial Statement Analysis Part 2, where we're going to take a look at the income statement. I've inter interwoven Destination XL and Geneseo Coffee Company into this aspect of the presentation. The first thing I've done is taken Destination XL and I've created an income table. This is a very summary, basic income statement. I've shown it from five years, and if you notice, I go from right to left, with left being the Far, the farthest right is the most current date, and you'll see why I did that as we move forward. So we have the sales, we have gross margin, the dollar, and then we show it as a percent. This becomes very important to look at the percentage of the gross margin. We have operating expenses, depreciation, interest, other, pre-tax income, taxes, and net income. And sometimes you're going to see very unusual things that are in here. And that's where we're going to go through next and talk about what makes up the compounds. What's the, the biggest thing? It all starts with this line right here, sales. Understood. Okay, in application project one, we talked about the drivers of the company sales. What makes it work? I gave you an assignment on that to really take a look at it because it's important. So now I'd like to take that and bring it into the discussion on analyzing income statements. So I'm going to go into more detail. Some of it I'll tell you is repetitive, but I think in, in any business at all, understanding how you make money, how these drivers work is critical. Now with a single co a company that has a single product line or something that's um, similar, for example, Molson Coors, um, they have beer, but they have a lot of different kinds of beer, but it's all measured the same way. When you get into other companies, it's not as easy. But that's why we're starting with something easy and we'll move into something more complex. It just means that instead of having a single measurement, you may have three or four. So now, let's take a look at more detail. Understanding the sales or the revenue is the most important thing in understanding the company. The drivers of sales, what makes them up is based on what the company does. Okay, and with Geneseo Coffee Company, Geneseo Coffee Company buys coffee beans, they roast coffee beans, and they sell them. That's all they do. It has both a sales price component and a volume component. So if we look at Geneseo Coffee Company, we know they sell coffee and it's they sell it by the pound. And there's a price per pound. So this revenue is changing because either prices of what we've sold the coffee for have changed or we've sold more or less volume. Okay, so one of the drivers is always a price or a rate. Now, the price will change, could change due to underlying input costs. So if the price of raw coffee goes up, we're going to try to pass that through to our customer. A change due to the ability to price higher, maybe we have a better product or a competitive factor, somebody went out of business. Um, New or different competitive factors. Somebody's came up with a better idea. Change to understanding cost and competition. We've gotten better. So in the case of Geneseo Coffee Company, we clearly know that if revenue is going to change, it's changing because of a price change in what we have sold or a change in volume of what we've sold. You can either sell more of the same or less than you did in previous years. So now, if our volume stays the same, we sold the same pop, the same dollar amount, and revenue went up, we would know that it was because of an increase in price. Then we can explore why did the price sales price go up? Okay, and if it went more, it we have to take a look at that breakdown between.
between that. And it can be increased or decreased sales from the same channels. General economy is up, better marketing, updating of stores. And then there's new markets and new locations, new distribution channels. Okay? Change in competition. So we look at it is where is it increased sales from the same channels. For those of you that are working on stores or retail, um, I'd suggest to you that's probably uh, what we refer to as same store sales. Then if you, so increase in or decrease in sales from the same channels, um, general economy, marketing, etc. In the retail business, it's referred to as same store sales. Given that we have a, a footprint of so many stores, if the sales go up on volume, it's same store sales. Okay, we could enter into new markets. We could build new locations, retire other locations. We could have new distribution channels, online, new wholesaler, change in competition, um, weather or other disaster. Okay, and I think when we take a look at weather disasters can influence volume. If there's bad storms, they're going to sell, if we're in upstate New York, we're going to sell more shovels, snow blowers, salt, and that kind of stuff. Um, and perhaps if we're in areas where there's hurricanes, we may be selling generators. So weather does have an impact. Now, there's generally, there's a driver that's a function of both volume and price. We could have a change in accounting that is fairly rare. Let's take a moment and look at both Geneseo Coffee Company and DXL sales or revenue. Okay, so we start at Geneseo Coffee Company, and we're right here, a statement of income and retained earnings for the years ending December 31st, 15, 14, 13. And what we're looking at is we saw an increase from 5 million to 6 million. So we saw a $1 million increase. Now, if we, so I'm looking at what makes up this increase from 5 million to 6 million or 1 million. Now, what you would do is you would look at the company's 10K and or an investor presentation. You will find this in management discussion and analysis. You will find this information in discussion about the business and it could be in the investor presentation. So you want to see what's driving that. And when I looked at Geneseo Coffee Company, what I found is they sell coffee, pounds, and they sell it price per pound. So theirs is actually pretty easy. In 2014, they sold 2 million pounds. This year, 2 million 181. So there was an increase of 181,000 pounds. So they threw, they produced more volume. The price in 2014, they got $2.50 per share, per pound, in 275 in 2015. So what we saw is that by producing 181,818 pounds more and charging 25 cents more, we know that a million dollars that caused a million dollars increase in sales okay so there's a volume in this so we say now how do we compute and look at that to understand it better we do what we call a classical rate volume so basically we compute increase in volume okay times this year's rate so in that case, it would be E7, right here, the number of pounds, times this year's rate. So the incremental volume is 275 times 181. The price is the increase in rate, 25 cents, times 2 million, and we see that it comes out equally. Now, sometimes it may not come out totally equal, and then you just prorated the change. 
but this is a very simple example is that we can say that there was a million dollar increase in sales for Geneseo Coffee Company attributed 500,000 to selling 181,818 pounds more of coffee as we added a new salesman who was very effective. We could also say that prices increased and we were able to pass this through and that had an impact of increasing revenue by 500. So when you look at this, we really knew what drove that million dollars actually pretty, pretty good. But this is a simplistic example. Now, hold on, because we're going to jump into something that's a lot more confusing. Okay. Now, and I did this analysis a little different, and as I said earlier, you have to adjust things. So in a very simple example, what I did is I made a chart that had all of the sales each year, and I looked at the year-on-year -year growth, okay, and then I looked at the five-year average growth rate, and I see it's growing at 2.68 cents. So I did a little bit more, and I said changes from 15 to 16 were 28.2, up 6.8 percent. That's there. I did this column at 7.1. But what I found is there's really three things that have happened. Increase in same store sales, meaning that existing stores sold more, and that came right out of the 10K. Increase in new stores, that are opening new stores, 44.2 million in sales. They closed some stores, and that reduced sales. And then all other. So what I've done is I've broken this down into these four areas. Same store sales, new stores open, decrease from closed. Where did I get this? All came from the 10K. Now, what I've done is I've said sales from store open 13 months increased based on higher sales volume driven by increased brand awareness impact of repeat customers. That's this. The company has been implementing its rebranding strategy for four years. Now remember, I talked about that in my first piece on Destination XL. In the year ending 2016, the company owned 35 new DX, opened 35 new DXL stores and closed 43 of casual mail. So there were a total of six less stores at the end of 2016. However, the total square footage increased by 59,000 square feet. The new stores were bigger and had significantly higher sales than the closed stores as a result of the new store model. So this, what we're seeing is that by building the new brand, bigger stores, more product, they're selling more per square foot than they're losing from those that closed. So over, and you can see the same thing happens year on year. So what we're seeing is an actual increase. The strategy is working. Okay. And I think that becomes, this is the starting point from that. Understanding the sales or revenue is the most important part of financial statement analysis. And that ties us in to the working capital cycle. So hopefully you start to see how everything is tied together. So you're going to get some of the information you need, as I said, from investor presentations on the company's websites, management discussion, notes to financial statements are useful. Sometimes you need to take what you know and create a model. As you saw with DX Destination XL, that I just created a very simple model based on what I found in the 10K. So you can find it too, looking at these different areas. By the way, if you can't get certain things off the company's website, you might want to go to Edgar, which is the SEC, and you will find it there also. All you need to do is enter the ticker sales. Now that we have this, um, at sales, what you saw that most common are sales growth. We look on things year to year, quarter on quarter, same quarter last year. 
So sometimes just looking at it year to year, again, why are we looking at this? And that will determine whether we use year on year, quarter on quarter, same quarter last year. Same quarter last year is to identify seasonality because some businesses have seasonality. So we can see it in a chart or a graph and we could then layer in a trend line if we like. Um, for analytical purposes, uh, we adjust sales for comparison. We can overlay them to industry or common size. Now, once we get the sales done, we know what's driving that, we move on to cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold are the direct costs of producing the product. These are the input costs the raw material, labor to produce, utilities, packaging, shipping, doesn't include the cost of selling or running the company, research and develop interest expenses or taxes. These costs are oftentimes based on the volumes and type of products or services sold. So oftentimes once you get the drivers of what is driving sales, you'll be able to understand cost of goods sold. That's, the, for example, Geneseo Coffee Company, the more they, more they sell in beans, more poundage they sell, the more they need to buy, the more it's going to cost to produce them and package them. Now, in some cases, as we'll see as we move forward, some costs vary with volume and others are fixed. But there's a high correlation relationship between sales and cost of goods sold. Okay, now what we look at is this gross profit or margin and you'll find it uh, used both ways interchangeably by experts in financial statements and it's simply defined as total sales less cost of goods sold equals the gross margin or profit. This can be reported in either dollars and then oftentimes in percent. There's a relationship between sales and the cost of goods sold. Sometimes looking at in absolute dollars doesn't help us as much as percentage. So that if we're seeing revenue grow and we're seeing cost of goods rise also, but we're seeing the margin remaining flat, that can be a positive thing. So let's just take another look at that. If the gross profit doesn't change, then the cost of producing the goods is the same, meaning the changes in input prices were reflected in the pricing. Incremental volume had the same cost as last year. If the gross profit increases the percentage, then the cost of goods declined for prior year. That could reflect scale, okay? That meaning that existing plant can handle more volume without having to add additional resources. Costs could have been re reduced. Prices weren't increased. So that's a positive. This is okay, this is positive, but now if the gross profit decreases, okay, then the cost of goods increase from prior year. That could mean we needed to add additional capacity the plant couldn't handle it. Costs increase and prices held. Sometimes we'll see in a commodity-based business that prices will come in faster than we're able to pass them on to the customer. Or cost increase and we didn't pass them along fast enough. Or they declined because of competitive situations. So that's the gross margin. We tend to focus on sales and then the gross margin and then dig deeper as appropriate. Now we have operating expenses and there's a lot of common terms here and each company is going to break this down on the face of the financial statements, the income statement, um, a little bit differently based on what's important to them. One of them that is you see commonly broken out is research and development. And that's an investment in the future but it's also somewhat controllable. Then we might have marketing broken out as a separate line item. Then we'll have selling or general and administrative. And this includes 
Um, overhead it includes management, accounting, HR, IT, facilities, etc. Um, they're not included in the cost of goods sold. Professional fees, your accountants, your lawyers, cost of selling. Okay, what does it cost to sell something? Office expenses, technology, etc. So there's a lot of different breakdowns. What you want to do is look at it. What you want to do is look at it line by line and determine what the changes were. Were they one-time items such as restructuring costs? Were there changes in R&D? Why were there changes in research? Was some of it related to volume of sales, commission, or advertising? So that's other expenses. When we uh, look at provision for taxes, um, Taxes. Taxes include federal and state corporate income taxes. Payroll taxes are reported in payroll expense. Tax is based on taxable income. There's often a difference between book income and taxable income in many cases because tax law allows you to write off something, depreciate something, using a different method than you would use for financial statement purposes. An example of that is Section 179 property, which allows you to write off the cost of the acquisition of the property, where for financial accounting purposes, we depreciate it over the life of the asset. So what you're going to have is you're going to have a greater tax reduction in taxable income, but it will reverse itself as time goes on. So this is called a book tax difference and that gives rise to what's called deferred taxes. Um, last year, in December, we had the 2017 tax law change, and that has had a will have a material effect on how we look at historical financial statements and how we look at them going forward. So I put a separate piece in, uh, at no extra cost, mind you, um, to uh, this program. So after you're done watching this video, you might want to go in and take a look at the text. And as always, if you have any questions, please let me know.